Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Mancini, president of Carteret Community College, and I'd like to welcome you to our next episode of Sound Bites, the official podcast of Carteret Community College. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Brenda Reich, executive director of Carteret Community College Foundation, and Carol Gear, president of the Carteret County League of Women Voters. It's great to have you here the day after the uh, League of Women Voters Women's Equality Day celebration, and you were both named as Women of Excellence here in Carteret County. And I, I think you're both wonderful leaders. You're real role models for a lot of people in our community. And I was wondering how you feel about that distinction. I know you were named with a number of other women from the county as well, but how do you feel about that? And what, what motivates your actions and leadership in the county? It, it was a great honor, and I'm uh, so surprised. League of Women Voters does wonderful uh, for our, is wonderful for our community, but the women we were with last night are amazing for our community, and inspiration for me. My mother was a teacher, uh, retired after 30 years, over 30 years teaching sixth grade, and when that's in your blood, more or less, it's. I never expected though I would be in education. I didn't think that was my path. But what we do for our students in our community, I think that's my inspiration. We help so many, and it's just an amazing opportunity. It's great. Thanks, Brenda, too, for, for all you do. Um, I think what motivate, it motivates and inspires me with the league is just being in the volunteer aspect in the community. And when we see all those amazing organizations last night and those women and what they do, and, I, you know, I look at myself and I pale in comparison to what they've done. But so many have started up these organizations that fulfill just a critical need for our community and really improve the lives. And so I think through our programs with the league, not only just the Women Equality Day celebration, but just the other events, the candidate forms and the voter registration forms, we, we help fulfill that need for a community. I think that's great. Well, let's talk a little bit more about both of your roles and organizations. And Brenda, I think a lot of people don't know enough about Carteret Community College Foundation and its relationship with the college and the role you play. So could you just tell a little bit for our listeners? Absolutely. So the foundation is the fundraising arm of the college. And it's a little confusing, but also wonderful at the same time. We are a standalone nonprofit, 501c3, but we work under the direction of the college president, but we also have to follow the rules of a nonprofit. So we have our own board of directors, and they work right beside Dr. Mancini in what the goals and needs are of the college for the students in the program. So that's our mission is to support the students and programs at Carteret Community College, but at the same time, it gives our donors an opportunity to support the college and also have a tax deductible donation as they could with any nonprofit. That's great. How, how are some of the ways that the foundation is able to help students and faculty and staff? What are some of the examples you could give? We, of course, have our scholarship program, and it's been amazing too what our community does for our students. We're able to have over 143,000 in scholarship dollars for our students annually, which is amazing and it goes a long way with our students. But we also support our faculty and staff, so our board annually in our budget puts $30,000 to help faculty and staff, whether they're returning to college for an additional degree, if they always have continuing ed units required, especially our faculty members, and we help give that money to the college so that it doesn't have to come out of our folks' own pockets. Um, and because the college is limited with what they can do with their funding. So we are so pleased that we can support faculty and staff that way. I agree with you. It, it, Carteret County has so many generous members of the community. It's, it's really amazing. And one of the things I've loved the most about being at Carteret Community College is the scholarship luncheon. And, and tell a little bit more about that. Our, and we haven't been able to have it for two years because of COVID. So everybody watch for March 2023. It will return to our campus. It's one of our best events. We bring our donors, our scholarship donors, together with the student recipients of those scholarships. They get to meet each other, but they get to learn more about one another. 
and everybody cries because of the stories from our students are heartbreaking but they're exciting at the same time because we've helped them overcome such stressors with financial um you know issues that they might have and our goal is of course to keep them enrolled and it's because of that we can do it but at the same time they get to meet a donor who is giving extra of what they have to support someone that they may not ever get to meet but it's so important to them they realize education is so important yes and at that lunch and it's really wonderful the do the scholarship donors get to sit and eat lunch with the students who've received their mm -hmm. scholarships and it's just really heartwarming to see them get to talk to one another and i know that our uh, financial aid office makes sure that the students send thank you notes they do. Uh, personalized notes to those donors and some of those are really wonderful as yes. well so. our, our financial aid folks are amazing in what they manage, not only matching dollars to students, but then also making sure those students take the time to say thank you. And in addition to scholarships and, and the fundraising that you do for that, our, I know that the foundation does some events. We, we do, we have multiple events, annual events. A lot of that is for fundraising efforts. Uh, we have our Escoffier dinner series that raises money for our students to go to France on the Gellner Exchange. We, of course, have, uh, we started a new one this year, Celebration on the Sound, and we're excited about the future of that. Uh, we have an annual fishing tournament in the summer, a golf tournament in the fall, and then we also started a summer soiree dinner series that's been amazing at the same time, spotlighting some of our local restaurants, breweries, uh, distilleries. All of it ultimately raises unrestricted funds that can be used for the greatest need by the college. And it's also a great way to get our community on campus. And, and just, you know, a lot of folks don't come because they don't think there's anything there for them. But there is. There's so many opportunities. And we just enjoy having them. We really do. Well, you do a fantastic job in that role. And I was so pleased to see you uh, receive recognition from the League of Women Voters. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was a surprise, but that was an honor, too. So. <laughs> well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's great. And then, Carol, you were recognized for being president of League of Women Voters. And uh, I don't think that the community knows enough about that organization either. So can you tell a little bit about it? Absolutely. Thank you, Tracy. Um, well, originally, the League, the U.S. League, was founded on, you know, the women winning the right to vote in 1919. So we celebrated our 100-year anniversary in, well, two years ago. Um, our league here, you know, we're each separate local leagues. We are 501c3s, all volunteer organizations. We started here in 1996. We are nonpartisan. We remain that way. And I think the league is committed to making sure that every eligible citizen has fair, free, and accessible access to the, to the polls. E every eligible voter can vote. And we want to make sure, number one, voter registration, that all those eligible voters that can vote are registered to vote. So that's one of our key uh, drives, you know, here and our key focus is voter registration drive. And then another one is candidate forums. You know, we also coordinate candidate forums here in the community so that individuals can learn about the candidates running for office in advance. So we invite all the candidates and we have those usually in municipal locations um, and everyone's invited, but they can really learn about their candidate before, the, before they go vote. Yeah, and, and the college is really pleased to partner mm -hmm. with you on the forums, but also on voter registration, I guess, since 2015. Since 2015, yes. we have. And, and I just want to say thank you, Tracy, to the college. You you all have been so supportive of us. And we've also got the SGA behind us. That's um, our uh, Student Government Association. Uh, yeah. Yes, we're excited about that. Your PR efforts are exceptional. You know, it's open to the community, so we do want to make sure we try to get that on the radio mm -hmm. but it is open to the community we have it all week the one reason why we have it in september is september 20th is national voter registration day so every year that's why we pick that week it's sort of national voter registration week and all the sites across the country are registering voters so that's why and it's before the election and the deadline for registration but it's a great time and it's right around civics 
or Constitution Day. Yes, yes. Constitution Day is always September 17th. And uh, institutions of higher education that receive federal funding are required to acknowledge Constitution Day. And so every year we do something on campus to recognize it. And this year we'll be having a contest again sponsored by our Student Government Association. And we often have a display in the library with Constitution artifacts and books available. And sometimes some of our history instructors do lectures. It's a lot of fun for us to mm -hmm. prepare for that. Um, and I know that you're coming again for voter registration. What dates again? Oh, that date is, so it will start Monday, September 19th. And they're from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we'll actually have a table in front of McGee building. Wayne West will have a table. And then we'll have a table at the Bryant Student Center. So for the whole week through Thursday, actually we'll, it'll just be open from 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Thursday, but the other days from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We will have evenings, too, available in Wayne West for those evening classes. Mm, we have two nights over there, Monday and Tuesday, we'll have voter registration available from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Great, and the public is welcome, and exactly. so that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And I understand this year we are going to be hosting some civics education that the mm -hmm. League of Women Voters is yes. providing. Yes, and we hope this will coincide with your Constitution Week efforts. We, we planned it that way. Um, yes, we're planning a series of three uh, seminars, and they're, again, free, open to the community. They will be in Wayne West Building. The first one is actually September 15th. What we wanted to do is just talk about local county government, you know, county government, how it's set up, you know, what the municipalities are. There's a difference between your county government versus local government. A lot of individuals don't even know about, you know, local elections or municipal elections. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to lay it out. The first seminar will be Carteret County Government, one hour long, September 15th in Wayne West, room 322. We also have invited Commissioner Mansfield to be involved because we want someone there from the perspective of county government. And then September 29th, we are having a session on the election process, safe and secure voting. And Caitlin Sabadish, the director of our Board of Elections, is going to be giving that. And it's really on the whole process of voting, absentee ballots, what happens after you cast the ballot, just the safeguards in place and the checkpoints in place that we have that allows us to remain, you know, to have safe and secure voting. That's wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank and you. I know that along with you, there is a whole group of men and women in the League of Women mm -hmm. Voters, uh, and mm -hmm. and they do a great job of, of being a, an awareness building organization. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. And I, I always ask my guests to tell me what they're reading right now. So I'd love to ask both of you, <laughs> Brenda, what are you reading? Uh, well, mine will be unexpected. Um, so I have started the process of obtaining a second master's degree. Um, how I'm going to fit this in, and it's very eye-opening right now, too, because virtual classes have changed a lot since the last time I took a virtual class. But I have a virtual interactive book. It is mm. intercultural communication. So that's wow. my focus right now. That's great. <laughs> well, I guess you can thank COVID for different kind of <laughs> yes. virtual learning. and I like to have a book, and I don't yeah. have one now, so I was mm. a little stressed yeah. at first. <laughs> I'm the same way. I like holding on to a book and turning the pages. Yes. That's really interesting. How about you, Carol? I just started this book, and it's a new one for me. It's, it's just kind of a whole different read. Sometimes I'm into mystery and suspense, but I grabbed this one. It's Ginger Z who's the meteorologist for ABC, oh, GMA, wow. I don't uh -huh. know. I know she mean. wrote this book, and it's really interesting, her background. I mean, she's gone through some difficult times. She does suffer from depression, but it brings out the whole mental health issue. Oh, but it's, it's also, I think, a story for women in that I think women are very hard on themselves. Yes. You know, we're especially just always judgmental of ourselves and it, it's basically and I just started it so I haven't gotten all the way through but it's also it's kind of like saying you know don't be so hard on yourself it, no one cares I mean don't you know think about you and take care of yourself you know and I think women 
especially in busy jobs like <laughs> we all have. Yes. We need that. That's great. Well, I, I think those are good titles to share, and we'll look forward to hearing more about both of those books when you finish them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so great to have you both, and thanks for Thank all you. you do in our community. We really are lucky to have you as leaders here. So thanks a lot, and I hope you'll join us for our next episode of Sound Bites. Thank you.